Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic, Marine Forces Command, Marine Forces Northern Command, Lieutenant General Brian W. Kavanaugh, welcome to the Change of Command Ceremony of Marine Corps Embassy Security Group, where Colonel Kelly Freshour will relinquish command to Colonel Clifford S. McGee. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Major Patrick J. Jones. Please rise for the invocation delivered by Lieutenant Commander Guy L. Passmore, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your presence at this change of command. I thank you for choosing leaders with integrity who ably lead the mission, who motivate us in our work and ultimately promote freedom in the world by training and deploying Marine security guards. I humbly ask your blessing upon Colonel Freshour and Colonel McGee as they pass between them the guide on of command. As it passes, strengthen them both in the task to which you have called them. I ask that you go with and show favor upon Colonel Freshour as she prepares for her new assignment. Through your strength, may she lead her new command to new heights of excellence. As Colonel McGee takes the mantle of leadership here, I ask that you bless him with keen insight firmness of character, and a vision for the use of his talents. May Og McKessick be blessed. Amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Please be seated. Sound attention! All present or accounted for. MSAL, all present or accounted for. Ladies and gentlemen, now taking her position in the reviewing area is Colonel Kelly Freshour, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Embassy Security Group. Colonel McGee will now take his position in the reviewing area. Sergeant Major, deliver the colors to the commanding officer. Aye, sir. We now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of the Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Colonel Freshour, and by accepting the colors, Colonel McGee accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and Sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Cruz is delivering the colors to the commanding officer. Present! Off! Sir, 
From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Kelly Freshour, relinquishment of command. Effective 10 hundred, 28 June, 2024, you are hereby relieved of your duties as the commanding officer, Marine Corps Embassy Security Group. Signed, E.M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Clifford S. McGee, appointment of command. Effective 10 28 June, 2024, you are hereby appointed and will execute your duties as the commanding officer, Marine Corps Embassy Security Group. Signed, E.M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Taking his position in the reviewing area is a reviewing official for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Commanding General, Marine Forces Command, Lieutenant General Brian W. Cavanaugh. Present! Please be seated. Officer to be decorated in all colors. Center. March. Detail. Oh. Live. Face. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the presentation of the award.
attention to orders. Kamala of the Marine Corps. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit Gold Star in lieu of the Third Award to Colonel Kelly Freshour, United States Marine Corps, for his service as set forth in the following. For exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commanding Officer, Marine Corps MC Security Group, Quantico, Virginia, from June 2022 to June 2024. Colonel Freshour provided superb leadership to a global unit that trains, assigns, and supports over 2,000 Marines in 145 countries for the security of 185 United States embassies and consulates worldwide. Under her leadership, the command updated its training and readiness manual to reflect the requirements and tasks that Marines perform in defending United States personnel and property against all threats. Her leadership of the unit ensured that each Marine was operationally focused. During her command, detachments were engaged in over 30 response to threats and emergencies that oversees United States diplomatic facilities. As a result of Colonel Freshour's leadership, all detachments responded with precision and determination to accomplish the mission. With the increased need for security, her unmatched diplomatic skills and knowledge of foreign affairs were crucial in planning the activation of three detachments while ensuring they maintain the traditions of the story command. Through Colonel Freshour's visionary guidance, the command will be better manned and equipped for all future missions. Colonel Freshour's outstanding leadership, innovation, and dedication to duty reflect the great credit on her and we're keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Signed for the President, E.M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Thank you. Please be seated. Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Kavanaugh. How's everybody doing? Uh, some friendly faces out there. First, I want to thank you all for coming out. I know there's some uh, senior State Department reps that uh, wanted to be here but could not be here. But I'll make the uh, thanks uh, for them and Lieutenant General Beerman, General Nethercott, other senior leaders, senior enlisted. Uh, thank you all for coming here today. I'll start with, uh, I want to start with uh, General Beerman for a second because he's an old friend, but for those that don't know, when you think about embassies, you think about the ambassadors and the diplomacies that they carry for our country, and you think about the Marines on post. And for our service, PPNO and that entire PPNO team is our end with the State Department. So they're the tie to the State Department, and then obviously the commanding uh, side is on my side with uh, Colonel Fresh Air, soon to be Colonel McGee, uh, to, to make all this happen. And you heard in the citation, I think it said 145 locations, 185 touch points, all those things. It's, it's global. Everything that's done is global. And we should all be proud of the Marines that are out on point, the MSILs that are represented here, that are ready to deploy, and then the actual group that is putting it all together for us. So. PPNO and the entire Marine Corps Embassy Security Group team, I'd like to, to offer up a round of applause for all that they do for our nation. So I won't talk long, but I will start with you, Kelly. You know, phenomenal job. You know, as I think about uh, kind of what I just framed everything in, that's all you. And you did that under a transition uh, for the command under uh, the leadership of PPNO and now over to Marfor Khan. Just a uh, superb leader. And those that don't don't know Kelly, so the uh, the, the motto of McKessage is, is pretty clear and she emulates that every day. But I'd add to it that she brings it with compassion and empathy. And uh, of all the colonels I've served with over the years, I think you carry that the most and it's one of your uh, best traits how much you care for all the Marines and sailors under your charge and you try to go out and see everybody all, all across the globe and just the feedback that I've gotten from you on behalf of them is just tremendous and you're a tremendous leader. For those that don't know, Kelly's heading over to uh, NORTHCOM and I didn't bring it up but General Giel, the NORTHCOM commander, Air Force, uh, reached out to me and he was pretty excited about you coming and uh, it's just her reputation is a uh, 
that grand. And I think you're going to do great things there. And just uh, fair winds and following seas as you head out. And just thank you for what you've done. So please, round of applause for Tom Pritchard. I got, I got my crutch here, but I'm going to try. So Cliff, you know, welcome Sophie, Dylan, Tyler, Brady, and Maddie. Did I get it? All right. So you, and for all who don't know, we got two marine options sitting over here. <laughs> they never said that. I just put that in. Uh, you know, you come with a tremendous reputation. And my understanding is you grew up a uh, child of two diplomats, and you used to run around the embassies as a kid. That's accurate? Yes, so your first lawful order is, as you take command, do not run around the embassies like a child anymore. <laughs> all right? Now, all joking aside, just tremendous reputation in this, uh, in this field. So I know you talked to General Beerman a little bit earlier, just the relationships, how that works. I'm just excited to have you here, and I look forward to working with you. So welcome to you and your family. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Colonel Freshour so she can give some comments. Thank you all for being here. What amazing weather. And also, I just want to let you all know, earlier this week I was in Frankfurt overseeing the region's one in five changes of command. And General Kavanaugh never dissuaded me from going there, but he did jokingly say, well, I guess if you don't make it back in time, I could just hand the colors over for you. And, and I laughed, ha, 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 let's, let's hope it doesn't come to that. And I was feeling pretty confident as I checked into my flight on Tuesday night, but not 30 minutes later, I started getting notifications from United about severe thunderstorms on the East Coast and asking me if I wanted to rebook my flight. And once panic kind of settled into acceptance, I remembered that in 2002, on a deployment to Spain, the second MEB chief of staff had given me the call sign of Jeb for Jeb Stewart because they could never find me when they needed me. <laughs> and I thought, man, if I miss my own change of command, that's gonna be like a poetic bookend to my career, right? But thankfully I made it. Uh, on behalf of Colonel McGee, I wanted to say thank you, General uh, Kavanaugh, for coming here and for those, those nice words. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant General Bierman, for, for being here. And General Nethercott, thank you for being here. We need to talk about Colorado like, afterward. So I know there's a couple others who had tried to make it and, and didn't quite. Uh, we have a lot of McKessick alumni here, though. We have Colonel Retired Rod Brewster, who was the group commander when I was there. Next to him is Sergeant Major Retired uh, Juan Alvarado, who was the group Sergeant Major. When I had Region 7, we got Colonel Keith Corella retired, who was the group commander that I, uh, there you are, that I took it over from. He led the group through COVID and stayed a third year so that I could take this command and not get reassigned somewhere else. So thank you so much. Thank you for taking my calls, even in retirement and even in year two. Um, let's see, did Sergeant Major Moreno make it? Nope, all right, that's good. Um, and we've got, Lieutenant Colonel Kratzer, who just gave up Region 2. Did Colonel Gibson make it? All right, well, former Region 1 who was, was planning on coming here. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to First Sergeant Tribel. Thank you so much for planning this whole ceremony and for making it as easy for me as possible. Sorry I tried to grab the colors too early. I got, got a little excited about it. Um, so in public affairs, there's an expression that kind of goes like this, be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. So I could promise two of those things for you today. Um, this is an incredible command. Not a week goes by that someone doesn't tell me, man, you have the coolest command in the entire Marine Corps, and it was not lost on me that they were correct. So we have MSGs and 185 detachments around the world that are led by detachment commanders. We've also got about 10 detachments within MSAL. We've got nine regions that oversee them. We've got the school that trains and teaches them, and then we have the headquarters that just makes the entirety of it run. But before I talk about them, I just wanted to say a quick note about our history with the State Department and this program. So most people know that this program started in 1948, and it was based on the role that Marines played at the U.S. Embassy in London during World War II. Uh, but what many don't know is that our history goes back way further, actually to like the earliest days of both of our organizations. And when we sing the Marines' hymn later, you'll hear us say a line that says, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Now technically it should be Derna, not Tripoli, but Derna doesn't rhyme with C. And Derna was technically in the Ottoman Empire of Tripoli, so I understand. Uh, most of us know about Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon and his midshipmen and his seven Marines and like 
400 other people who marched 52 days against 500 miles through the desert to do the assault. Uh, we know that a force of 4,000 fell to a force of fewer than 1,000 in the span of two and a half hours. And we know that it was the first time our nation's flag was raised in victory on foreign soil. But what many people don't know is that Lieutenant O'Bannon and that Squad Plus, and that's a really big plus, right? Like 400 something folks, uh, was actually led by the Consul General of Tunis, Mr. William Eaton. And he was in the thick of it until he took a musket ball to the wrist and had to like sit the rest of the battle out and Lieutenant O'Bannon took the rest of the way. So I think it's pretty neat that in the earliest days of both of our agencies or both of our organizations, you had a squad of Marines led by a State Department nerd. <laughs> and now today, we have 185 detachments out there of steely-eyed killers, Marine security guards led by a bunch of State Department nerds. But uh, in all honesty, they're amazing professionals. They have some like pretty legit war stories of their own and they take such great care of our Marines, maybe too good a care for the number of them that wanna go and join their ranks later on when they grow up. Um, but it's been such a, a great time working with so many of you. And I know, that, uh, I know that I call many of you guys friends today, so I've just been honored to be a part of that relationship, whether it's out there in the world or up in Roslyn at SA20 or down in Blackstone at Fast C, or even here just in McKessig with an MSAL in the school and our headquarters. So thank you to the State Department. Um, this program has many fans and supporters. Uh, Marine Forces Command, our, our new hire headquarters, sir, thank you so much for everything you've done. You've helped us solve problems that have plagued this program for a very long time because you just have a gigantic staff of very professional, experienced folks who can help us solve some problems that shouldn't be problems for like a normal Marine Corps unit. So thank you so much for that. Um, PPNO, you used to be our higher headquarters and it's, it's good that we moved uh, because you guys are busy, sir. I've seen the whiteboards. And uh, despite, despite the busyness, Lieutenant General Turner and Major General Morris Durops, they were very, very grateful with their, or, uh, they were very generous with their time and the support that they could offer. And so I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're still slightly tethered. And then where's Colonel Mike Brooks? There you are. Our formal legal hire, right? When we fell under PPNO, Colonel Brooks was my legal hire. So thank you for taking great care of us. Thank you for always taking my calls, even when you knew it was about TRS. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now I want to thank my Christinas. So when I was at the basic school, I used to teach ethics, and we talked about the Stanford prison experiment. And this is an experiment that went really, really wrong. It was only supposed to last for two weeks. It ended after six days because Dr. Zimbardo, the architect of the experiment, his girlfriend, Christina, came and visited and said, what in the ham sandwich is going on here? And it all ended. So I've always known the importance of having like friends or Christina's that I could talk to about anything who would tell me like, nope, you're, you're on the right track or like, no dude, don't do that. So I've got quite a few Christina's here. I've got Colonel Steven Sudi, I've got Colonel Carrie Batson, and her husband, Colonel Fiscus, who gave the toughest love advice. I've got uh, Colonel Retired Chris Myers, uh, Marta Sullivan, Ashley Stepinski, Colonel Cozy, Colonel Katoya, retired Lieutenant Colonel Bellman, and um, Allison Daly. Uh, so just thank you to all of you who are here, and for those of the, those of the Christinas who couldn't make it, I would not have made it through this command if I couldn't have been able to call you guys at any time and, and just ask you the most outlandish questions or get like the best advice. Um, all right, so to the Marines, sailors, civilians, agents of McKessick, uh, the last line of my command philosophy was, I want McKessick to be a better place for having had you, and I want you to be better for having been with McKessick. So if anyone thinks I did a decent job at McKessick, it's, it's everything to do with, with the Marines that are around the world and kind of standing behind me. But I can absolutely say that I'm a better Marine and a better human for being here and for having served with all of them. Um, it takes a village and our village elder is Mr. Baker. I see you back there. Thank you for taking a break from the board to come to this. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you're the, the continuity, you're the connecting file. You care about this program more than anyone I know. And uh, everyone would like to know, when are you retiring and how do they apply for your job? So that's for them. Uh, Sergeant Major Cruz, my travel buddy, my lounge partner, my senior enlisted leader, thank you for just being a good dude. We have to spend a lot of time together and it would be just unbearable if you just weren't like a good dude. So thank you so much for everything. Um, I'm not gonna name every single section or every single Marine, 
although I, I feel like I could now because the weather's so nice. Uh, to S1 and GPAC, um, you guys don't like the, the lost luggage counter at the airport because nobody ever comes up and says, hey, I got all my bags, thanks, right? But you guys are the absolute unsung heroes and the workhorses of this command. I mean, this is very much an admin command and it's what you do is so important and I know you just don't get thanked publicly a lot for it. So just thank you so much for everything. Uh, you always see me, even when I try and sneak in, just to ask one question really quick. So thank you for your attentiveness to like absolutely everything. To all of the other headquarters sections, I would say that you're the work salmons of McKessig because I was thinking about how you have to swim in, in DOD and Marine Corps waters, just like fresh and salt waters. So I decided to look up, well, what kind of creatures live in both fresh and salt water? And the first thing that came up was eels. But I was like, well, I can't, they're slimy and cold-blooded. I can't, you know, don't compare them to eels. Um, and then I remembered I'm from, I'm from Alaska and salmon, right? And that's perfect because salmon thrive in both waters and they swim upstream and they fight the currents and they jump the rapids and they dodge bears and it kind of falls apart, the metaphor falls apart there, but um, you, all, you all get my point, right? So thank you for everything you do. You guys are incredible. Um, and then supported by school and headquarters, the, mass, the vast majority of the Marines who can't be here. So I'm gonna brag about the ones who are here as MSAL, Marine Security Guard, Security Augmentation Unit. Uh, they got real busy after October 7th, if you can, if you can imagine. Um, but they are the ones who, that we throw at a problem before it becomes a, a big problem. They spend a lot of time in the Middle East and Africa and South America. Um, spend a lot of time in Haiti. I think probably all of them got a couple trips to Haiti at this point and uh, no sign of that stopping anytime soon. Um, they support our president, our vice president, our secretary of state when they do overseas uh, trips. And they support the fleet marine force. They, they play themselves in certification exercises so that the fleet knows what they're getting into when they go out there. They understand country teams and, and embassies and consulates. And uh, I get so much praise from ambassadors, chiefs of missions and RSOs about how much they appreciate MSAO and how much they're grateful for what MSAO has done for their mission when they go and visit. So uh, MSAO, on behalf of all them is Jesus. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, and also thank you for participating in the ceremony. I'm so grateful to have served with all of you. You all look very sharp. Band, I was gonna say you sound sharp, but I know that's not a compliment, so you guys sound great. You know, thanks for being here. Um, and Cliff, I don't have to tell you what an honor and a thrill it is to take over McKessig. So I'll just say to you and Sophie, welcome back. All right, good morning. I appreciate uh, everybody coming out. General Cavanaugh, General Bierman, General Nussacott, thanks for coming out. I got a few more words for you in a little bit. But, uh, these Marines you see in front of you represent 2,100 great Americans. They're out there standing their post right now. I am so proud to be here. I did grow up in the embassies, and three of my siblings, I'm the last of six. My mom was very fertile. So uh, <clears throat> three of my siblings joined the diplomatic service like my parents, but not me. I joined this program because of the Marines that impact on me, and I'm proud to stand in front of them there today. I told the Marines beforehand, I know it's hot, I know I got, but I gotta thank some people that came out because they mentored me all the way through my career. From OCS, TBS, Com School, I got Kari right out here, Brent Dodd, great Americans that took care of me. Uh, when I went to Okinawa, Colonel Dunn, I think he's out here, he chose me to be an aide. I didn't think that would work out for either of us, but it did, so I appreciate that. Anglico, Anglico came in force. Uh, those are the times where I grew the most uh, during combat. So, John Eddington, Travis Williams, Michael Hayes, great American, and David Stowes, thank you. There I went over to uh, let's see, the Mew. Mew team's out here. Master Sergeant Lewis, Robert Lewis took care of me all the way through. All my, all my staff and COs throughout my career showed up. They flew in from California and I asked them not to because I did not want them to take any time out from me. So that's incredibly uh, beneficial. And then I had the opportunity to go CS, OCS where I worked under General Nethercott. Ma'am, I learned more from the way you took, handled situations and made decisions than you'll ever know. I'm grateful for that time and I'm so proud that you're here. Glenn McKeema and Dallas Shaw, two great Americans. Thank you for being here. From there I went to Division, Chris Port, Jeff Roman again, uh, served with him, did some great things out there. I think Rick Rivera might have made it. The Maul team, Casey Huzz, thank you for coming out. But to this team here, I want you to know I will do everything I can to see you win personally and see this organization win personally. You're great Americans, I appreciate what you do every single day. Hoorah.
Now taking his position in the reviewing area, Colonel McGee. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Anchors Away, the Marines hymn, and remain standing for the final dismissal. gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain seated for a presentation by the Marine Embassy Guard Association. <laughs> to Colonel Kelly Freshour, McKessage Commanding Officer, June 2022 to June 2024, presented by the Marine Embassy Guard Association Board Directors on behalf of its members in recognition of your support, leadership, and guidance. Your leadership was crucial in supporting our mission to uphold the Marine Embassy Guard program's legacy while forging enduring connections with the men and women who serve as Embassy Marines. Your dedication to duty helped us uphold our association's core values and more importantly, embodied them. We wish you fair winds and following seas. And Semper Fidelis. <laughs> On behalf of the Commanding General, Marine Forces Command, Lieutenant General Brian W. Kavanaugh, the officers and Marines of the Marine Corps Embassy Security Group, thank you for your attendance. Please join us in the McKessage HQ Atrium for the reception. Semper Fidelis.